Time for a book review. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach with Zach's Books and today I have got my review of Holly by Stephen King. So, first let me begin with saying we've had another long break of not posting stuff because we had our son. We had our son Maverick and he's the most adorable child in the world. Danielle will probably put up a picture of him somewhere. He is currently sleeping, and so if I get a little quiet at some point or you hear whining, that's because of him. So, uh, but we'll go more, we'll talk more about that in something with Danielle's channel or the podcast. Um, once we kind of get more on top of that, it's been a little while, and we're still kind of getting uh, used to him around. So, uh, but we'll have all that stuff linked down below, Danielle's channel, the podcast, all that fun stuff. This book, if you want to check it out, we'll have linked down below as well. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let's get into my review. Okay, so this originally started as a reading vlog about two weeks ago is when this whole Holly thing was supposed to start. When the book came out the Tuesday, September 5th, <laughs> all time is literally irrelevant to me right now. I, like It still feels like Monday when he was born, but I think it was the 5th or something like that. When it was release day on Tuesday for this book, I got it, but I was working. So Friday, we started filming the reading vlog. Friday, we also found out that we were going to be having our son early. So spent all of last week, or depending on when we post this, two weeks ago, he was born on 9-11 and he pretty, on September 11th, and that whole entire week we were in the hospital, so I couldn't do anything with the book then. And then all of last week, the first week we finally had him home, he was in the NICU, which I say that wrong, and Danielle makes fun of me all the time for it, so. <laughs> um, and all of last week, we were uh, growing accustomed to him being home. So, I didn't actually pick this book up until two weeks after I started the reading vlog. And that brings us to now, I finished the book. So, I'm going to try and do what I did with The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I'm not going to try and go into a tangent at the end because there's nothing really super confusing with this book. Um, like there was in that one, which if you have not seen that video, check it out up here because it is a... It's funny. Um, so, Holly. I'm going to start off with my rating. I'm going to give this a 4. I've sat on it. Well, I finished it last night during one of my shifts with Maverick, and this book, <clears throat> how do I want to phrase this? It is, and I don't want to, I'm not going to try and spoil anything at the beginning. I don't think there's really that much to really spoil, because it's just like the Mercedes trilogy. The killers are revealed at the beginning, and you're following their plot line along with, like, two or three other people, so it's like easy to find out who the murderer is it's just a matter of when do they get caught who catches them and what happens like at the end so basically we are following holly gibney uh during the pandemic during covid um and we're also following barbara i can't think of her last name barbara something and jerome uh they're they're siblings and during this whole process, Jerome really is kind of like MIA because he's trying to like get a book published and stuff like that. And Barbara, at the same time, is like has like a secret like writing project. She's trying to be like a poet or like maybe not like a poet, but like write short stories. I think it's poetry. Um, <clears throat> and pretty much what you know, she meets one of her idols, and basically what we're also following is the Harris family, Emily and Rodney. I think was the guy's name, um, and they are our antagon protagonists. I always get this confused. They're the bad people, the people who we don't like, and what they are doing, which this is revealed early on in the book, so it's not like anything, I'm not spoiling anything. What this old couple does is they will pretend that Emily is hurt and in a wheelchair and like the battery stops working, so they ask for help, somebody to push her into the van. 
Meanwhile, the guy, Rodney, again, I think that's his name. I'm probably guessing saying it wrong. Um, like tranquilizes the person and they hold, they hold them captive, like down in their basement. And what they have been doing is, I'll save that part for the end, just because I don't, I don't know if that is a spoiler or not. I know that they do capture people and like do things to them, but I don't know if that is correct or not, if that is like a spoiler. So I'm going to hold off on saying that until I get more towards the end. Um, but I am just trying to double check here if that is the name of the guy, if it's Rodney, because I know it's Emily. Well, regardless, um, in this book we pick up like pretty much right after If It Bleeds, um, which is the short story, If It Bleeds, in the collection If It Bleeds, which is Holly number two, the second story with Holly Gibney. So we're following Holly in this one. Again, like I said, it's with COVID, the pandemic. I'm going to get this out of the way right now. This book was like the Mercedes trilogy or the Bill Hodges trilogy, whatever. It was a very solid story. I really enjoyed it. But I'm somebody who I don't enjoy like political talk all that much. And King uses it a lot in the first half or even two-thirds of the book. A lot of it. Like, pushing his view, like, anti-Trump, anti-this, like, all this stuff. And it's very... And, and I'm not, like, trying to say, like, I'm opposite of him or anything. I don't like political stuff. I'm, the, I'm not one of those kind of people. But he pushes it down your throat, like, way too much at the beginning bashing a cert somebody who I already mentioned, bashing how a, a, the COVID pandemic was handled by that certain somebody, you know, people who are like, oh, they don't wear masks, so they must be that person's supporters. And it's just like, we get it. You don't like the guy. Like, we get it. And that's really the only thing that really docks any points for this book for me. As much as I want to try and ignore it, it's just... It's hard to ignore it. And so that's why I wanted to address it because I know some of the reviews I have read so far, people have given this two or three stars basically because of that aspect. However, when I look past that, the last third of the book is it never gets mentioned and it's probably the greatest part of the book. It's phenomenal. And if you take out all of it at the beginning, it's probably a five star book. But it's just too much for me. I just don't like my politics in books is ideally what I'm getting at. Besides that, it's a very good story. I really do like it. The whole aspect of the Harris family, like being the culprits when they're like in their 80s, it's just like it throws off Holly so many times because she's like, oh, this person has got to be like, you know, big. They're taking all these like pretty much people are getting kidnapped and they're disappearing, and the reason Holly gets brought into this is because some lady who misses her, uh, I think it's her daughter, I believe it's her daughter, and, like, she calls the Finders Keepers Foundation, like, po like, place where Holly's part of it, and, like, it's just, it's such a good story, and the plot is so, like, keeps you on your toes, it's so, like, eerie and creepy with what the old people do, and it's just, like, it's very good. I really did enjoy it. Like I said, I just, that first part of the book was just too much, like down your throat with political stuff. And honestly, I want to say Billy Summers was kind of the same thing for me that it was mentioned quite a bit, but I still gave it like five stars or four stars or something like that because the whole story was phenomenal. I mean, yeah, I don't know what else there really is to say that's like not spoilerish with the book. It's just, you know, the biggest thing. Okay, so spoiler alert now. Um, I'm going to go into some spoilers with this book. If they are spoilers, like I said, I don't remember because I started this two weeks ago and picked it back up. So a lot of ha has happened in my life since I started the book. So what I would say, I don't believe it's I believe it's a spoiler, but it might not be, but spoilers ahead from now on. Pretty much what the Harris family is doing is 
The two Harrises, again, Emily and I think Rodney, Rudney, I don't remember. Um, the guy's annoying. Uh, pretty much, they're, they used to be professors at this college, and they, like, very much so, the guy is, like, very weird with, like, wanting to, like, keep themselves alive and stronger and so what they do is they capture these people and basically eat them like they i don't even know if they cook them honestly but what they've been doing is when they capture someone they give them like a raw liver like there he is a raw liver like in the cage and they like say like yeah you got to eat that otherwise you're not gonna get any more water and it's it's really gnarly what they do like they and there's this one girl at the end i think her name is bonnie that's the girl who i think we're like supposed to be trying to like protect penny doll yeah her name penny doll's the mom and her missing daughter bonnie is the one who like at the very end is finally like they reveal that she got captured and that they did eventually eat her and like you really think that she actually is going to get out but she doesn't and so, which it comes in handy because she drops an earring in her cage that Holly uses to actually slit Rodney's throat. And then Emily, like, loses her shit at the end and tries to kill um, Holly with, ironically enough, Bill Hodges' like, gun. I think it's like a thirty eight or something like that. Because Holly went to actually go and do some investigating towards the end to, like, solidify, like, yes, this is them, this is their van, they're the ones who are doing this. And, but the plot twist for Holly is she actually still believes that there's somebody else, like, as an accomplice, and the old people are, like, just helping. And they literally, like, surprise her, like, oh, yeah, no, we're the ones who are capturing them, and we're eating them. And it's like, what the fuck? So... Overall, like I said, it's a very solid story. I like the whole, like, cannibal aspect of, like, the two older scientist people. I think it, like, it's, like, gross, but it also, like, makes you a bit more intrigued because it's, like, why are they doing this? Like, what's the whole point? And it's supposed to, like, keep them younger. Like, they do, like, bone marrow cream and, like, all this weird crap. And it's just, like, ugh. And... It's really it's it's a really nice book and like I said I give it four stars. It would be over that hump, but so as someone who was skeptical about this book coming out before you, you know, binged the whole Hodges trilogy, now do you see? So now you see like a place for this book and how um, King like really wanted to write it and how he pushed so hard for it. Yeah. I 100% could see, he, on the back of this book, he has a quote, and he says, I could never let Holly Gibney go, she was supposed to be a walk-on character in Mr. Mercedes, and she just stole the book and stole my heart, Holly is all her, that's what he says in the back of this book, so he really liked Holly Gibney as a character, she lives at the end of this book, like I said, spoilers, earlier I said there was going to be spoilers for the rest of the video, so if you weren't expecting that to happen, sorry, but she lives so could there be a holly 2 could there be a sequel that can happen most definitely but i don't know how it's gonna go um the other nice thing with this is holly becomes like a millionaire because like money that was left with like her mom like went to her uncle and her uncle like can't do anything with it because he's got something wrong with him so she's rich i, I honestly don't know if they did a sequel what what they would even do um the other thing i like about this book is the cover because everything you see that's lit up in yellow like the window here there's a window down here the lamp post and the lamp post on here it's actually supposed to light up at night i haven't noticed it though because i've been dealing with my son um and it's the other thing i really hate is the edition i have is like messed up which i said in my reading vlog video which we started and did nothing with other than that Solid story, four stars out of the Holly Gibney, out of like all the Hodges and like the Mercedes, the Outsider, if it bleeds. I'd probably put Holly at number three. I personally just think Mr. Mercedes is a better book. 
and by what I can recall, the Outsider is a little bit better, but Holly, I would say, is better than Finders Keepers and uh, End of Watch and the short story If It Bleeds. But I definitely need to reread The Outsider. I wanted to do that before I got to this book, but just simply ran out of time. So, but uh, yeah, we'll have this link down below if you want to check it out. Down there is also going to be the podcast, Bookstagram, Danielle's channel. Otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.